Uh, well, I'll, um, I'll kick things off. Uh, welcome along everybody to the 2017 um, candidates debate for all of the positions which is Recreation, International, Postgraduate, Campaigns and Colleges. These are the 10 hour positions for OUSA. Um, my name is Hugh Baird and I will be looking after the debate today. Um, I'll just start things by saying that um, today is being recorded. Um, I hope no one's got any rejections to that. Donna, I don't know what we do if people do. <laughs> I see Donna if you've got some objections to that. Um, I'd also like to say that we do have Sage Burke today, who is our student support manager. Can't see him at the current moment. Uh, if anyone does have any issues with anything troubling, um, feel free to go see Sage over there and have a word. Um, so without further ado, I will kick things off um, with asking some pretty stock standard questions of the candidates. Uh, I'd just like to go through everyone at the current moment. I'd like to guys and girls to introduce yourself, uh, say a little bit about yourself, what you're studying, uh, you know, favourite food, favourite first date, perhaps. Um, so, without further ado, I'll let you kick things off. Oh, um, hi everyone, I'm Shibanka and I'm running for the International Officer. Um, I'm a second year student um, and um, I just love curries. <laughs> Law and Psychology, I'm in fourth year, and it was favourite food, eh? Probably pasta or pizza. It's up, it's up to you guys. Anything about yourself. Anything. <laughs> Anything. Yes. Hi everyone, I'm Siobhan, I'm a second year social work student, and I'm running for a colleges officer. My favourite food is probably mac and cheese. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kirio, I'm the current president of the Postgraduate Society and studying towards the Master of Health Sciences, and I'm running for the Postgraduate Officer, officer position. My favourite food is definitely bolognese. Kia ora everybody, my name is Angus and I'm running for uh, campaigns. Uh, I'm also a first year politics student. Uh, this is also one of the top three th most terrifying things I've ever done at the moment, um, so please bear with me. Um, I'm also a returning graduate, which means that, uh, like a lot of people when I first came to university, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be in life. I came here to find my place in the world. Um, and so, through that, through many years of work and many thousands of dollars later, I came out with a nice shiny commerce degree. And I thought, cool, that's it, I've done it, I've made it, um, it's time to make a lot of money, right? Well, I admit my first job was pretty low wage. Um, it was, you know, just a job, I thought, just to pay the bills. Uh, or so I thought. What I found pretty quickly was that people everywhere are being underpaid, overworked and mistreated. Um, and I'll be damned it wasn't six months later that in that job I was a union delegate organising those very same people uh, to fight for the rights for their workplace, to fight for better wages and better support. Um, it wasn't long after that 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 workplace was under active negotiations for a collective agreement to get those workers the, the rights and the pay that they deserve. Um, that's the sort of thing that I want to bring to this OUSA and to this election for your campaigns officer. Thank you. Hi, my name is Josh and I'm going for recreation officer. Um, I'm studying Māori and music and I have a bachelor's of science in psychology. And I really like all salads. Hello, my name is Ermi. I'm running for international officer and my favourite food is all the Asian food. <laughs> Um, what's up guys, I'm Roger, I'm a second year politics and psychology student, I am running to be your campaigns officer for next year. Um, my favourite food is probably anything with egg in it. Yeah, excellent, no, thank you very much guys. Roger, I'll leave the microphone up here with you mate. Uh, the next question is, um, obviously we've got the introductions from you all now, uh, so what is it that you guys believe is OUSA's mission? Uh, the main thing that they should focus on, and then specifically to the role which you guys are running for, what is the most important thing that you can do in that role, or what is the main person of purpose of that role? So Roger, we'll start with you, mate. So just to clarify, it's just like what OUSA should be, and yep. what I will do. Yeah, what, what should OUSA's main focus be, and then what should the main focus of those independent roles that you're running for be, or what do they entail? Um, well, I think that OUSA should be a representative of um, a representative group of the student body in that they should be able to speak for what is in the best interest of students. Um, I think we can all agree on, on that. But I think that in terms of campaigns in particular, I think that there is a lot of potential to have a lot of work done and historically campaigns have been um, 
uh, really, cam the role of campaigns officer has been to the whim of whoever that person is. And personally, I think I will take a proactive approach in working with my fellow executives in making sure that all the campaigns that they want to be running are done as smoothly as possible and I will instill structures such as the use of Trello to just make sure that everyone is on track and make sure that every um, stone is left unturned in terms of making every campaign as good as it can be. I also agree with Roger that OESA should stand representative of the student and it should listen to students' voice and deliver that to university. And as an international officer, I want to make sure that international students' voice are heard to university. Usually our voice are not so hard in a bigger environment, so I will make sure that it is hard. Um, I think that OUSA has quite a large variety of roles, and one of them is um, representation on like a political level, but then there's also facilitation of a fantastic experience. Um, my impression of OUSA is that it's always been facilitating like a lot of beautiful bonding and growth-oriented experiences throughout the campus, so kind of being that glue that holds together a lot of different aspects of campus life. So in the recreations officer capacity, um, I would like to see even more um, networking between the various activities and opportunities on campus and increasing the like, accessibility of those and the visibility um, of those things like the clubs and the courses and um, even more gigs and just facilitating um, increased connectivity in the student body as it's already doing but in an increased. I personally think that OUSA should be an independent student body that looks after the rights and privileges of the students. It wasn't that long ago that the OUSA and the student body occupied the registry building over fee increases. And you know what? We held it for an entire week and we won against that. And that's why I think OUSA should be. And that's the sort of thing that I want to bring back to the student body, back to the student union uh, in my role as campaigns. Thank you. So I think that everything OUSA does is in some way tied specifically to welfare. We're here to represent student interests so that you can have a good time, a safe time, and find yourself in an environment that caters towards your success at university, whether that's academically or socially. I think that as a postgraduate officer, my role is split in half. Firstly, I've got to be a good executive member. That means I've got to support the people around me. I've got to do the right things to make sure that they can see, they can succeed, and they can go out there and do the best for you. Then specifically, I've got to support the postgraduate community and make sure I represent each of those diverse communities. It splits me in half, but I think it's one of those roles that requires a lot of responsibility. Um, I think OUSA is definitely being about the student support and putting them forward first. I have not really seen a lot coming out but again, we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. But in regards to colleges, all residents in those colleges matter. Their voices should be heard. It's not just first years. There are second years, third years, fourth years, fifth years, if they really want to stay that long. But it is important that their aspects are being put forward first. Um, I think OSA's mission, important goal, is obviously the students. That's probably the number one thing. But the things that come around the students, making sure they're healthy, making sure they're supported, making sure they're thriving academically. And I think students in whole colleges are not as connected with OUSA as it could be, and I really want to bring that connection forward. I want to get them to see the best they could possibly get out of OUSA. And yeah. um, Hey everyone. Um, so, international students make um, one of the biggest populations of um, students down here in Dunedin at Otago Uni. So what I'd like to do is um, international students are not that um, out there and in the community. So I'd like to embrace the events that are going on and also um, implement extra events and stuff where different groups um, and ethnicities can combine together and hold events and stuff. Um, and also improving the information system out to the in international students because I as an international student myself felt like I wasn't being given enough information in first year and um, yeah, just improve the communication systems and interactions between international communities. 
Cheers. Uh, just a quick fire question, just a one word answer from all of you. Uh, what is the favourite thing for all of you that OUSA does? The favourite thing for all of you that OUSA does? Um, I'd say the support it provides to international students and the extra opportunities they have um, for international students. I like those kid and cuddle sessions, they make my soul a little like glow. I also really love the kid and cuddle sessions. I just appreciate the fact that OUSA gives students a face at the university. Uh, the voice that it gives students. I would say um, education. There's a whole array of awesome communities and courses and things that you wouldn't necessarily learn at university that you can learn through OUSA. I love all the culture clubs that OUSA support. The event is amazing. Um, I really love the events that OUSA runs and how they bring everyone together and build a sense of community. Excellent, no, thank you very much. Um, part of the role in your individual portfolios is making up the bigger and larger executive, which obviously meets quite regularly and discusses a lot of the issues that students have. Um, a lot of those meetings, there'll be a lot of disagreements about particular issues and everyone will have a different sort of uh, opinion, given their background and all the rest of it. Um, if you were to be on the other side of the executive as a whole, in terms of your opinion and the rest of the executive's opinion, and they were to vote in favour of something that you wholeheartedly disagree with, how would you go about, if you were to be asked by, say, a critic or any other individual on campus in displaying your opinion uh, as a member of that executive of that decision? Um, so could you just, like, phrase that and just, like... So, <laughs> so the executive makes a decision yeah. which you disagree with wholeheartedly. If someone was to ask <laughs> you of your opinion on that decision that the executive has made, how would you answer that? Um, I would honestly speak my mind. Like, um, I think that as an individual, um, we are representative of different parts of the student body, and I think that we should each bring our own values and our own opinions to the table, and just informing with everyone else doesn't really get anything achieved. And if you genuinely disagree with something, you should voice that. And if the critic asks you, you shouldn't be afraid to say it. Just a follow-up question to that, do you think it's better to look as a, a whole, as an executive, as a more stable executive rather than a bigger executive that will be disagreeing with every other decision? Well, it's really a case-by-case -case scenario, I think, that um, depending on different scenarios, I think um, unity would be a good idea and have everyone agree and be on the same page. But again, I still think that everyone should have their own opinions, and if they all end up converging to the same thing, so be it. But I, I stand by my idea that I think a variety of opinions is greatly valued. You're not on the unity ticket, are you? It just so happens that I am, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. No, thank you. I think it's a really difficult um, situation, but I, behind all the opinion we have, we have our like the, why we came up with opinion, so I'll listen to everyone's reason why they have that opinion and then I'll also tell reason that why I have my opinion and I think if we all understand the reason behind why we came up with the opinion, we can come up to more middle ground that we can all agree and I'll be honest to critic also how we came to that conclusion. Um, first off, I would make it clear that I support any decision that we come to as a whole, as an executive, but then in a personal capacity, if I did disagree, I would um, explain that as opposed to conforming. Um, as Roger mentioned, if you have blind conformity in any decision-making group, it's not going to end well. So having a variety of backgrounds and individual opinions means that you'll have a thorough discussion and come to a better outcome. So I've spent a good deal of my time fighting for uh, ideas and opinions that people, uh, most people don't really seem to think it was a good idea. So things like uh, improved wages for staff and work and stuff like that. Um, things that uh, large, powerful employees don't really like to hear. Um, so I'm not afraid to stand up for things that I believe in personally and believe that uh, would be something that I would take such a, a good big stance on. Um, so, I mean, what I would do there uh, is obviously stand my ground, talk with the executive uh, and sh make sure that they understand the topic as well as I do, make sure they understand my point and I understand theirs. 
Um, and if we don't come to an agreement, if we can't come to a compromise, then I would stand steady in what I believe in. So, I think it's my duty, if I'm a future exec member, to vote in my conscience. I think it's absolutely my job to represent student interests as I think student interests should be represented, which will be reflected in the voting record at every single meeting. So if Critic or any other media outlet or even any other person comes to me and says, hey, I see the majority of the executives said one thing and you went against it, why? I'm not going to throw a tantrum. I'm not going to go there and say, I think my executive are terrible, they didn't agree with me. I'm going to calmly explain that I think it should be done one way, but I'm going to support my executive to make sure that we can do the best job possible. Because if they do something I dislike, but I try and tear the place apart, that's going to be bad for everybody. So it's my job to support them and to give my opinion. Well, we're all not going to have the same idea. That's a too idealistic goal. But I'm really honest in how I feel about situations, and I will voice that. But I will also take into consideration the other ideas of the executive. And importantly, I will consider what the student body has to say, as we are representing them, and that is important. Um, I think, personally, that if someone asks me on my opinion, I have to actually state my opinion. And if a critic or something else asks me what I think, obviously I have to state that it's I'm supporting the rest of the exec because that's, that's what it is. You have to support the people around you, even if you have different perspectives and perspectives than them. Um, I think through democracy, you want if people state their different opinions and you disagree with it, doesn't mean that you can get annoyed or grumpy or anything like that. I think it's just getting to a stable outcome where you state what you think and it, you know, just keep it smooth, if that made any sense. <laughs> um, I would just take a pause and just think, trying to think um, in the way that all other executives are thinking and if, if I agree on it and then, and if I'm able to think that way, so um, I just like to come up with a mutual understanding and a positive outcome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, follow-up question to that last one then. If uh, a, a lot of what the role is, is sitting on a lot of university committees and um, giving student voice and representation on those committees. Now, if you were to be sitting on one of these committees and you were to take the idea of the committee or the agenda of the committee back to your executive, and the executive was to disagree with your opinion and then say to you, I want you to take that opinion of the executive to that university committee, and argue on our behalf at that university committee to something that you wholeheartedly reject, how would you deal with that situation? We'll start with yourself. Can you say that in a simpler way, please? <laughs> <laughs> so executive makes a decision as a whole, which you disagree with, but you have to take that decision of the executive to the university committee and argue on behalf of that opinion which you disagree with. How would you do that and how would you deal with that situation? I don't think I'm, I'm that picky, like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty all good going with the decision. I think it comes back down to supporting the people on your exec. If they have that opinion and they've asked you to represent that opinion, and it's the majority opinion, you have to go there and give the best shot you can at representing that. It might be hard, it might be a little bit difficult, but I think that just comes to, you're going to have to do that a lot in different situations in your life, so I think I'm sure I'll be fine doing that. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, the executive as a whole, if you make a decision, go back to your department or whatever and do voice your opinion, but you can work on negotiations with each other, which might be important. I think there's a slight problem with it being so hypothetical here. So in the most dire... It's, it's not. No, 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 it starts no, 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 I know what it happens, I just mean, you can't, like, without a very specific example, so I'll continue here. So, I mean, in the most dire of situations where we are absolutely opposed in the worst case possible, then we might have an issue. But I think generally, for every time there's a disagreement with enough talking, with enough working out, you're going to at least understand the other side and be able to represent it fairly. So in a situation where we have a disagreement and I have to go to a committee, I'm going to make sure that I've sat down four hours and talked this out and come to at least a place of understanding of what my exec wants and why it wants it. And I'm going to say, this is what the executive would like me to represent and to pass on to you. Well, I mean, yeah, it would absolutely depend on the situation as it would arise. But, um, 
from almost dire of circumstances, yeah, it would take a lot of uh, negotiation and talking and compromise. Um, it would have to be that both sides have a full understanding of what they are talking about. And if it was did come down to the very hard, hard facts that the, that the university and the OUSA did not agree with it, then you would have to go back and negotiate and continue to do that sort of stuff. But, you know, as I said, it has to be the most dire circumstances. I imagine most cases you can compromise and you can work together. Uh, that is what a student union is all about, after all. The point of having a decision-making body is to make decisions. And the fact that we are representatives means that we have input into those decisions. So, as has eloquently been put before me, it would be about understanding why those decisions have been made. Because sometimes you have to take a wider strategic view um, rather than your individual perspective. So that's why it is important to talk things out and understand where people are coming from. And if you do that thoroughly, then you should be able to go back to those bodies in full confidence and be able to then communicate effectively to them. So it's not only about effectively communicating within the exec, but then with all those other bodies that are connected through each of us individually. Yeah, I fully agree with Josh that as a representative, we all are representing our own people, and then our opinion are representing both those people. So I'll understand when, if I have a disagreement, I'll go talk to them and understand where the opinion is coming from. And then, if I do that process, I can be confident that I can support this opinion and I'm respectful of the decision that's being made in the executive. I think everything that really should be said has been said, really, um, in that I think if there is a dis disagreement on my part that I come to an understanding with uh, my fellow executive members and I take that opinion to university boards and I present that as a representative of the exec. Um, my personal opinion shouldn't really come into it at all, really, if I am um, a sole representative. Though, um, yeah, yeah. No, very well answered. Um, the next question uh, is, is two-pronged. Uh, first of all, what do you believe is the single biggest issue facing students at the current moment here in North Dunedin? And secondly, what is a tangible solution if you were to have a magic wand to fix the issue? Um, would this magic wand be guaranteed with one quick fix, or...? It's, it's kind of rusty. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, so, the way I see it, uh, Dunedin, uh, the living area around Dunedin, um, <laughs> it's not as clean as it can be. Going around at night isn't as safe as it can be. And I think general welfare around campus, um, for example, uh, the, the glass that's riddled uh, the streets of Castle, of Leith and the like, um, and yeah, just general living conditions around Dunedin. If I had a magic wand, I'd make it a utopian society is just clean, people can walk around safely and not have to worry about anything. Do you, do you have any ideas specifically as to how you would bring about that change? Um, so, yeah, I have been in contact with the Proctor, um, Dave Scott, and I've been talking to him with, um, we've been going back and forth with certain ideas as to how we go about that. Um, but I think a good way to start is a, um, an attitude change. I think um, if people rethink their mindset of these things around um, breaking glass around Dunedin, around sexual harassment and violence, if they, if they change their mentality, I think that, yeah, we, we can definitely achieve this goal. Excellent, no, thank you. I think the biggest issue we are facing is well-being and mental health. And like, university is the stressful time where it's going to lead into our future. And so many times we don't know what we want to do. And that gives us lots of stress. And then that affects our mental health well-being. And as an international officer, I want to create lots of support system towards international students so that they can achieve their best academically and socially. I also think that um, the probably the most crucial issue we're facing with students is mental health. Everything comes from mental health. It affects your physical well-being, your academic standing, your social life, your emotional life. It all stems from you know, the state of your mind. So I think that there, there are way too many instances of suicide and self-harm in our society. It's shocking and that manifests most strongly amongst the youth. And I feel that the most crucial 
contributed to that is the culture. Um, it was the culture of alcohol abuse and the culture of um, this somewhat like a denigrative aspect to many of the um, social interactions that you can observe sometimes. So I really think that in order to properly deal with that, we need to look at how people are interacting with each other. And a lot of that is through alcohol and alcohol abuse. So one of the main ways I think that we could deal or start dealing or addressing the issue of mental health is to provide more opportunities for people to interact in ways that are not necessarily connected directly with alcohol. The biggest issue <clears throat> facing students today are the ginormous cuts to staff that are currently undergoing by the administration. 182 full-time equivalent jobs are going to be lost, which is closer to about 250 to 300 jobs. Now this is a university that boasts year after year about the millions of dollars of service that it makes, yet it insists upon cutting the vital services and support staff that we need and we utilize every single day. Um, look, so what do we say to do, what are we going to fix, how are we going to fix it, right? What is the magic wand? We, the students, are the magic wand. We don't need to be a magic wand or anything like that. Direct, strong action is what we need. Uh, I was part of all the organization for the uh, protest against the staff cuts. I saw students turn up in their hundreds to support their staff. We are the magic wand. Thank you. So I think, like, if, like a lot of people before me, I'm gonna have to say that mental health is by far the biggest issue facing students. Everything that we do ties in some way to mental health. When you've got staff cuts and so you've got unsurety around what your degree is going to be like in the future, that's going to be a stress. When you live in a cold flat, that's not going to help your mental health. When you identify as a student, you get a bad grade, and you're not quite sure why, that's going to affect your mental health. Not being able to afford food, student debt, I could go on, it all affects your mental health. And for postgrads specifically, I have to mention this, one in two postgrads say they report having mental health issues to the point where you joke about being able to schedule in your next mental breakdown between study, and that's become some sort of normalized position for people to be in. I'm not a fan of that. If you ask me what the magic wand solution is, I think that's exactly one of the problems we have, is that people think there's a magic wand solution. There isn't. You need a lot of evidence-backed, hard thought out expert opinions in here to determine what's going to work and you need to measure that year on year and it is a slow and it is a painful process but you can't just guess at something like this the costs are way too high it's way too serious a problem to just guess at what might work we need to take the time to do it right and it's imperative that we do that agree with the rest of them. Mental health is such a big issue here and it's one I'm definitely passionate about myself. I've seen day to day all the students in my hall are collapsing under the weight of mental health and nothing is being done about it and that is just disappointing. How many more people is it going to take to try and kill themselves until we fully recognise and start doing something important? It should be that everyone should be able to ask are you okay? And come for help when they need it. Probably getting sick of mental health by now, but I'm going to have to agree anyway. Um, I agree there is no magic wand to the fix it. Like, if I wake up in the morning and I see a blue sky, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit happier than I was if it was raining today. But there's no magic wand to go around and fix people when they're feeling sad. But all we can really do is support one another in many different ways, and I think that's what we need to do, bring more support systems figure out different ways of doing things. Um, same, I like to say mental health. And for international students, um, overcoming mental health, like, um, since they're not quite bold and open, so um, I'd like to, like, um, have more international um, mental health officers out there in the offices where students can go and, like, talk to them. And if not, like, they don't want to be open about it, then make things like apps and stuff where they can um, do it anonymously and get some advice and help on how to overcome those issues. Thanks. Cheers. I think we can all agree mental health is the big issue there. Um, well, that's enough from me. I think everyone's pretty sick of hearing me talk. So we're going to ask um, anyone out on the floor whether anyone has any questions, and uh, we'll put these candidates in the hot seat. Make them sweat a little. So does anyone have any questions? <laughs> right, we can over here. Thanks, Hugh. Um, my name is Guy, I'm running for Admin VP, by the way. Um, this is to all the candidates, and it's some basic information that you should absolutely know. 
What sort of financial information do you know about the university and about IUSA? Um, I don't know much at the moment. I read some of the minutes and they kind of had a little bit, but other than that, probably not a lot. We should know more. I've heard it's a multi million dollar company. I don't know. Figures haven't really been released, but. Uh, so I know that OUSA is a multi million dollar company. I know that currently it costs $50,000 for us to, approximately $50,000 for us to sign up to exit the USA. The, the CCTV is looking like it's going to cost approximately $16 million all up. I know that there's also a lot of asymmetry of knowledge here because OUSA has the ability to you know, not tell students particular things. I don't mean that in a mean way, just you know, confidentiality, you're not always able to. I wish we could, but I get that, that's totally fine. I don't want to use up everything though, so I'll pass it on. <laughs> so the university is, as, as my fellow candidates have said, a multi-million dollar company. This year, last year, they made $670 million. Obviously they spent most of that, but they still came away with a surplus of about $30 million which is ridiculous in my opinion. Uh, OUSA makes about $8 million every year, and this year has an operating surplus of $200,000. Uh, I think that's $200,000 that could be put towards far more campaigns, far more organizations, and far more support for the students and staff. I'll, um, I'll just, one follow-up question. That $26 million of surplus that the university uh, created last year, where does the surplus go? Well, that's a good question. Would it go right back to the students under legislation that it can't go back to stakeholders? Well, why should we be running a university for profit? Why should we be not focusing on the quality of education for our students instead of the profit for our shareholders? Is it a profit if it goes back to the students? Absolutely, it increases the value of their degrees. It increases their earning potential later on in life. I'm asking you. All right, we'll come to that in a second. Can you continue with this one. No, 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 let's get the break. Now, put your hand up with your king on losing stuff. Paul, with all due respect, some people haven't finished answering the. Yeah, we'll, we'll finish this question first and then we'll come to that one after. Josh? Um, so, uh, I've been around the USA for a while and I remember when VSM came through and how. You know, traumatic that was um, to go from having mandatory student membership where every student that signed up to uni had to sign up to OUSA to um, voluntary student membership where people could opt out of that process and it makes the budget for OUSA hard to manage. Um, they wouldn't know how much they're getting each year. Across the country we saw other student organizations crumble in Canterbury and Auckland. There's massive downsizing and it's, it's hard to manage an organization when you don't know how many people are going to sign up every year. Um, so the university stepped in and they formed a service level agreement with OUSA to provide a certain amount of money for each student that signed up to the university because they recognized the huge level of value that OUSA brings to the university campus. And one of my goals is to look at ways within recreation that we can further create internal revenue streams in order to support OUSA and more people getting involved in a professional capacity to bring those services to students. Honestly, I don't know too much about it, but I think some of them we can access, but some of them we have confidentiality, so we cannot know. And that's why I think it is important to have a transparency. Um, again, uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure of all the nuances of uh, the finances behind OUSA. I'm aware that it is a multi-million dollar organization. I know that it costs around about $50,000 uh, to be part of NZUSA. I know um, some things here and there, but obviously my knowledge isn't complete. Appreciate the honesty. Um, I believe we might have some more questions. Anyone hands up? Um, just full disclosure, I'm the current Vice President of OUSA. Um, so my question is to all the candidates, and I've got two. The first one is, are you able to stand up right now and say that you will oppose the support services review job cuts? And can I get a raise of hands if you're going to oppose the job cuts as part of the support services review? Um, yeah, um, well, it's, it's, it's a pretty controversial... I just, I just want to raise of hands if, if you... Oh, raise hands if I oppose? Yeah, if you, can people raise their hands if they oppose the support services review by the university? So nobody opposes it at all. Angus does, okay. And who opposes the cuts at the PE school? 
Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> hey, so um, for everyone, uh, would you actively try and make OUSA independent from the university? If so, why? If not, why? I think that a certain level of independence is needed. Yes, but I feel like OUSA should be working with the university rather than um, wholly independently. I do think that, um, or at least financially, I think it should be independent. We shouldn't have to rely on the university to really um, uh, prop us up. But is, is that really, does that answer your question, Shane? I haven't come to a conclusion to that question. But I think as an international student, I have different opinion, maybe, because as an international officer, I'll be working closely with international officers at the university, and I think it is important that we have a really good collaboration, and I'm not too sure being independent will enhance that or decrease that, so I have to look carefully into that. I think that it's important to work with all of the different parties present on campus. Um, and it's a question of practicality. It would be awesome to be financially independent from the university, but with the current climate, um, with the legislation, with VSM, it's not practical. And if OUSA did try to do that, it would have to downsize in many different ways. So I think that there's a capacity for both, for OUSA to generate more um, independent financial support, but also to ask for more from the university to provide more for students. I absolutely think that the OUSA should be an independent student body because currently as it stands we pay hundreds of dollars in union fees to join up whereas the university only doles out a portion of this to the uh, OUSA. That is unacceptable in my opinion. Um, if they also hold the guillotine of our executives' heads. If they, don't decide, if they decide that the OUSA takes a stance or a position that they don't approve of, that they don't agree with, uh, they can cut funding. It wasn't that long ago that the OUSA took a powerful stance against the uh, uh, apartheid, so against the uh, uh, rugby tours. They didn't do that with the permission of the Vice Chancellor, with the permission of the Proctor. They took a stance for themselves and for the students. They took a stance against racism. They didn't, they didn't wait around for a referendum or anything like that. They knew exactly what the student body wanted. They were independent. They were able to do that without repercussion. I believe that we can do that again because there are many things we should be fighting the university against. Number one of them is the staff cuts uh, that are currently going on. I think it would be fantastic if OUSA could secure some additional revenue streams. I mean, who doesn't want more money? And if it's independent from the university, that's definitely a good thing too. Um, I think that OUSA and the university can both have a working relationship, but OUSA can stand up on its own two legs about some issues. I quite agree with that. I think that we are, at the end of the day, we, all we care about as students, we should work together. But yeah, there should be things that we should be kind of independent about. Um, I also think um, they should be working together because we are university students associations so you need to be connected to university somehow for the um, peace progress of students in a positive way. Excellent, thank you. Hands up, questions? Kia ora whanau. I apologise for my outburst before and trying to hide behind the fact that I've got Alzheimer's it's hard to hear the critical. So my question to you is this, are you in favour of the continuing privatisation of the university, and if so, why, and if not, what are you going to do about it? I don't have anything to say about it, because I don't think it's much related to international. Personally, I have informed a view on it either. I don't really have much of a view on it. I think so long as we can look after student interests, it's not necessarily a big problem. The question is, is how can we work with the university to look after student interests? That's what we're here for. And I mean, we you need to sit down for a number of hours, you and I, and discuss exactly what you mean by privatization, <laughs> exactly what your concerns are. So actually, after this, feel free to come and speak to me, because I'd like to talk with you more about that. I am absolutely against the privatisation of the educational system in this country because it only uh, affects us as students negatively. 
Uh, every single year, the university puts up fees as much as they can. Every single year, they cut services. They spend millions of dollars on paving stones and ignore the vital support staff that we need and we utilize every single day. Um, I absolutely agree that we should be fighting for an independent student union, for an uh, independent publicly funded educational system that benefits everyone. I don't believe that education should cost an arm and a leg. I don't believe that finding your place in the world should bankrupt you. Yeah, yeah. I think it's important to look at the, um, the facilities around us and this campus and realize that without the costs that we are paying towards university fees that these areas would not exist. The university is bloated. It has um, efficiency issues, obviously, which is why they're going through service level review. Um, and maybe one of the solutions to that could be um, more transparency. Maybe if they worked more with the students, then they wouldn't have four years of declining student numbers um, which has obviously sent some people into a panic from a shareholder point of view. You know, that's terrifying from a business point of view. So four years of declining numbers is a worrying trend. Um, so I think that what they need to do in an economic sense is not privatize necessarily. It's not about privatization of public learning. It's about transparency and it's about consulting. It's about finding out what the reality is on the ground and how they can cater to their you know, target market, which is students, in a more effective way. This could be you know, the most banging city in the country. Like, Wellington's got a housing crisis, Invercargill's expanding, Auckland's increasing, and Dunedin's shrinking, and we need to think about why that is, um, whether it's because the culture is being squashed, or if there's another factor, um, we need to look at that together and come to the table as a community in order to achieve a sustainable and fantastic city for everyone, which I believe is possible, which we just talk about. Universities for students and for place to learn new stuff and educate ourselves. And then if it was for our benefit to privatize it, maybe it's a good idea, but if it was for good for us to stay public, I think we should stay public and it should be like not my personal opinion, but we should ask students what should be the best for us. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely aware of the situation regarding the privatization of the university, um, which is why I do think a little bit of transparency would be greatly appreciated. Hands up. Same. Same. Alright, so um, most of you talked about mental health as being the biggest problem facing students, and I think that's that's very apt. Um, but a lot of you talked about OUSA's role in um, helping to address this. And um, from my perspective, the, you know, the, the criticism of this is that actually this is a pastoral duty that the university has, not OUSA. And that over the past few years, what we've seen is the university essentially outsourcing this pastoral duty to OUSA. And in the process, this has made OUSA dependent on the university and unable to take uh, a critical stance towards things that the university are doing, unable to take the wider view and like step back and look at the big picture because we've bogged down providing all these services for students who are struggling. Um, how would you ensure that in, in providing these pastoral, uh, pastoral duties for students that you're not compromising OUSA's uh, independent and critical role? Um, can we just get a re clarification of that question? I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, just like, sorry, I don't, I don't really quite understand that question. So, what, what, what do you need clarified? Um, with what you mean by like the transition from the university to the OUSA into the pastoral? Uh, yeah, I mean, where, where do you. In terms of things like mental health, student welfare, where is the balance in terms of this is the university's duty versus this is OUSA's duty? Well, I see unit, um, OUSA as a representative of the student body and I do think that although um, I think it should be an equal part, like almost a 50-50 split between the university and OUSA in terms of responsibility because well, at the end of the day we are all still students of the university and OUSA um, is the representative of the student body. Yes, but we represent the welfare of the students and what we, the, the system that... 
Sorry, who's who's answering the question here? Oh. <laughs> you asked the question. It's a forum. It's a forum. Uh, we'll, we'll, yeah. We don't need to clarify what we're what we're doing now, but we just answer the question or, or or move on. Or Sam, do you have any other points you want to add? Continue. Roger back to you, Matt. Yeah, I think regarding um, just keep it short snappy, um, I think regarding welfare, I think it should be a fifty fifty split responsibility between OUS and university. I'm not aware of the whole history behind this, but I think OUSA should be providing support for students because as a student we understand each other more, therefore we can provide more efficient support to the student as part of OUSA, that's what I think. I think it's important to talk about the type of support that we can provide. So there are different types of support you can provide for students in the mental health sphere and the welfare sphere, and some of those ways the university won't understand and some of those ways OUSA will be cash-strapped if they provide. So I think that the university should be providing professional services, um, therapists, mental health consultants in the most clinical sense in the ways that they can provide, if we're talking about how we can split this up. And then OUSA should be providing the more cultural, community-oriented aspects of providing for people's mental health. It doesn't need to be, this is welfare, like, you know, this is caring for students, it is how can we create a holistic approach with all the parties involved in a sustainable way and it doesn't compromise us as an organization and it's about having that conversation about how we can provide because <coughs> excuse me, if we just lift it up to the university obviously they don't have the perspective of the students they don't know what it's like they don't they might not even ask you know like um, there's always that degree of communication so what we can do as an organization is come to the table with that contribution and talk about how we can cooperate with everybody well, I think, I absolutely agree. I do not think OUSA should be providing the mental health support services. It should be the university. The OUSA, the student union's job, is to find the gaps in that mental health provision and to make recommendations to the university and to hold them to account and to hold them to a certain level of quality when it comes to mental health provision because it is an issue in today's day and age and it is something that's getting worse and it is something that we, as a student body, have to do something about. If you've got a right to mental health, which you absolutely do, then there's someone who has a duty to provide for you an appropriate level of care. That duty is determined by those who can best bear the burden of providing that duty. I think that falls on everybody, and it's not fair to just scapegoat the university and say, oh, well, it's only your job and you're the only people who should be doing it, and then also to leave us out of it, as I was saying, and to say that we shouldn't be doing anything, we're only representative of welfare, we don't do anything to do with welfare. I think you've got to look at the relationship between the university and OUSA and see the ways in which we can work together. The university is an old, slow-moving institution, which means that once it gets the ball rolling on something, once it knows something really, really works, it's in a fantastic position to make sure that thing sticks around for a really long time. OUSA changes every year, so we're in a position to try something for a year, to be innovative, to trial things, and see how that goes, and if it is successful, then we build on those successes, bring up that initiative until the point where we can hand it off to the university. And it's the kind of thing that you might do with, say, the free flu jabs, is that you bring it up to a certain point, you make sure you know it works, you build on that success, and then you go to the university and say, hey, we've got a working initiative here, we'd like you to implement it because you're the people with more money than us, and you're able to make sure that becomes a systemic change. Um, I definitely think it is a share share role. Um, it is such a big issue, especially um, like with the flu jabs that have happened this year. We've already seen that people want them, but also I don't believe that the six free counselling sessions are enough, and I do think they should be increased. I can't go there and be told, wow, six, you're cured. <laughs> that doesn't work like that. And me especially, I have a mental health issue, and living in a college, I have not seen any help or support received. I have been told I'm too stubborn and would not go. I was like, what have you offered though? So that is really important for IRA training to be put into the hall, more support, more morale boosting, just something different. I think that the onus shouldn't be put on a certain body. I think it is university's job. It is, not the job, but it is one of the um, Aspects, um, I think that's how you probably describe it, but anyway, I think that if OUSA has a capability to help and support the students, why not? Like, what's the problem with doing that? 
Um, it is important for us to be an independent body in some aspects, but again, that's one of those aspects where we should all be supporting each other, loving each other, helping each other out. I do agree, halls don't have enough support. I have multiple friends in halls that, colleges, oh my god, I keep saying it wrong, colleges, <laughs> I'm getting confused, colleges that don't have much support. I've had friends of mine in colleges that had mental health issues that went off in their second year and unfortunately did commit suicide and there wasn't enough support, there wasn't enough help. And if OUSA can provide some of that help, why not? Um, I think it becomes a responsibility of both OUSA and the university because we are associated with both the associations and um, also for international students, um, coming from different family backgrounds, there's always a pressure and um, also that your parents, in my case, are putting so much money and um, so there's always a pressure of getting good grades and stuff. So yes, I, I feel like there needs to be more um, international support for um, mental health. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, excellent, thank you very much. Uh, Rachel, <laughs> you can have the next question. Hi, I'm Rachel. I just got a question for the international candidates because I'm an international student for far too long sometimes. Um, so yeah, so one of the biggest issues facing international students is international fees. Based on my research, international fees are increasing and enrollment figures are going down. It's also a national issue affecting every single university in New Zealand. So what would be the best way for you to approach it and to lobby for it? Um, as far as I know, like past years this has been an issue, but um, I don't think we can alone do much about it because um, the way they have been walking through is how much the government is putting in for the, international, um, for the domestic students. To match that up, the international students have to pay that much of fees. I'm being an international student myself saying this because I had this issue and then I tried to find out why I'm paying that much money. And um, yeah, I don't feel like much could be done. And what we are paying for is, is all the resources and the things that the government is helping to pay for domestic students. So, and also that if we had the same services provided in our own countries, um, coming here o overseas, you would have to pay that much of money to be able to get that world um, recognition kind of a thing, because you can get the same education in your country. So it's just your choice kind of a thing. Yeah, and I don't think we can do much about it. Yeah, thanks. It is a huge issue because it's so expensive, but I cannot do much about it with my personal capacity. It is a national decision. But there is an organization called New Zealand International Student Association being established soon. So if I'm lucky enough to be an international officer, I will look into the data and work with the association to lobby the government and ask them what the, what the fee we are paying is going for and whether there is a way to decrease it or at least give us more transparency so we understand why we are paying this much of money. So the uh, general election is just 18 days away, um, and so I, what I want to know from you guys is what party you're going to be voting for, if you're comfortable with saying that, and, if, um, and also, who do you think has the best tertiary education policy? Um, uh, personal on personal capacity, I'll be voting for Greens. Um, and in terms of uh, tertiary education policy, um, I am reluctant to, there isn't a tertiary education policy that I wholeheartedly agree with as it stands right now. Um, uh, um, I'm an international student so I cannot vote, but if I can vote I will vote clean because they have the best welfare system I think. And then personally maybe New Zealand first may have the best tertiary education agenda to make the last year of tertiary education free. Um, I think it's important to say that I was undecided until three or four months ago. I'm definitely going to be voting for Labour. Um, and I think that their education policy is pretty dope. Um, it's cool to be able to dip your toes in before committing 
four years to a degree that you might end up not wanting. Um, so it allows people to look around and decide if they even want to be at university or at Polytech, and it gives people options. And yeah. I'll be voting Labour and Greens this year because Labour is the party of the unions, and they are the party that will be voted in because of us, because of students. And because of that, they owe us a hell of a lot. Um, that also means that there's going to be a complete uh, change in the in the way that the uh, college and that are organised. So uh, Harley and Hayden is not going to have her friends in Parliament anymore. So we are able to push through OUSA for more dramatic changes to student policies, for reductions in fees, and maybe even in the future, free tertiary education. I honestly don't know who I'll be voting for yet. I've got a lot of time left to make up my mind. I've got a lot more reading and research to do. This is the first year I'm actually legally allowed to vote too. Are, so you, that's are you leaning towards anyone at this stage? Um, I'll, I'll give you this. I'm centre-left, highly liberal. As for who I think is going to represent me the best and represent people the best, I'm not sure yet. I honestly am just not sure. I'll come back in a couple of weeks and I'll be able to tell you. But um, I'll be voting Labour this election. Um, I do agree with their tertiary policy, but um, I'm kind of iffy on the three years for education. It's more about the living cost that's affecting us, so I agree with the $50 increase. I pretty much have the same you know, opinion. I vote, I vote Labour, and I do agree with the dollars. I don't really know about the three years either, or the, um, the one year first year free, but you know, i I'm an international student, so I can't vote, but looking at all the debates that they have, um, um, Labour sounds pretty good because um, they are focusing on the youth of the country and the health of everyone, so I reckon good health leads to good, good education, so that's my opinion. Alright, um, Hughes, head to shoot off. Francis, do you have a question? Um, thank you all for standing up and putting yourself in this position because I know it's very hard to field questions, especially when you're on the hot spot. And I'm sorry that I'm going to give you another question. Um, but I guess it's a bit sad to hear, and maybe it wasn't like conscious, that some of you referred to OUSA as a company because it shouldn't be a corporate organisation, it is actually a student union. Uh, that should be controlled by students, but since the introduction of VSM, Voluntary Student Membership, under the national government, uh, we've lost our independence. So something which is critical about that is not actually being able to determine how much money we get as an organisation. That is up to the university. And something which probably very few of you know is that OUSA is getting cut uh, a few percent and Unfortunately, not many people know about that, so we're not going to do anything about it, but it's getting cut. And if we don't actually take uh, kind of a stance, if we don't actually stand up and inform the student body, keeping the whole student body actually uh, involved in advocacy for OUSA and OUSA being advocating for students, then um, I don't see anything going anywhere for, like, how can we deal with mental health and how are we going to fund it 50% or like however much if our fees are getting reduced. You guys are going to have less money to deal with and then OUSA, oh, <laughs> then the university is going to start paying their fees and their contributions. So, <laughs> sorry bro. So the question is, um, how are you going to be politically active and actually advocate for students um, involving students in a political sense? Sorry, clarification. Um, so, <laughs> with independence being a very big issue in terms of student advocacy, um, what, what are you candidates thinking about doing in terms of student advocacy um, being engaged and engaging the student population in political issues? Um. <laughs> I'm running for international, so I don't have much about the political issues. So, um, but I'd like to say, like, um, just working together, like, and having like, just having mutual understandings between both, rather than fighting for each of them to be independent. 
So, yeah. I'm really confused what you're talking about. So you're saying that, are you talking about the fact that if they go through with lowering the fees, uh, then we won't have much money coming in? Uh, that's so, grass. Yeah, I'll just clarify. So pretty much what I'm saying is that the university is cutting our fees. Yeah. Um, so if we're, if we're dependent on the university, it doesn't matter, we're still going to get fees cut depending on what the university wants. Yeah. So I feel like OUSA should be a political body advocating for students. So like, how are you going to engage politically to kind of search for the well-being of students with less money? Like, are you going to try and be active and try and have an independent voice kind of thing? Of course we will try to do as much as possible to be the student's voice, even with less money. That doesn't change the fact that we will still want to be student, the student's voice. How we'll go about that, I'm not entirely sure at this point, but if you want to ask me later on after I do some research and figure it out, I'll be more than happy to give you my answer. I think I'll add something to the question. So essentially what Francis is saying is that the SLA funding that we get from the university is going down. Um, and because we're reliant on that funding, how can we how can we avoid biting the hand that feeds us, but still remain critical of the university? So I guess what he's asking is how can we be critical of the university when we're so heavily reliant on their funding, and how do you think we can change that? I think it's <laughs> I think it's bringing in that balance <coughs> and seeing how we are we at the end of the day we are working together and we are a team in some form or another. We are representing the students. How we go about that, again, I'm not entirely sure. I don't want to make up a reason and not be fully confident of it, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not going to sit here and make a bunch of promises that can't be kept. Um, it will be definitely interesting. Pick your battles well. You're not going to go and fight the uni if it's going to keep cutting your funding. But can we possibly bring in outside funding at all? Like, like OUSA can invest in things and start businesses and look at alternative revenue streams. I think some people have talked about that in their, in their campaign statements, but we haven't heard much about that today. But, but yeah, it's possible. But yeah, it's the sort of thing people campaign on. Yeah, it will definitely be something to be looking into next year. Um, a good bunch of transparency would actually be helpful and lead into discussion. I think it comes down to a few things. Firstly, we've got to try and look at some, some sort of independent revenue streams that would be really useful to have. So like I said, it keeps us away from just only being funded by the university. And I think I said earlier, you know, you can't turn down more money. That's a fantastic thing. We also need to communicate better with students and look more look at more efficient ways of doing that to remain accountable, to remain transparent, so people know how they can most effectively engage with OUSA. And then after that, it's about also becoming a, a slim and streamlined OUSA if we need to be. Work smarter, not work harder. It's making sure that when you do put forward the initiative, when you do do the work, it's based on evidence, it's expert backed, it's the right kind of thing to be doing, it's not just a wild guess. Or just a just clarify on, on streamlined. And yeah. on streamlined, is it referring to like job cuts and, and sort of minimizing staff roles and saving money in staffing costs as well? Uh, well, no, we're talking about OUSA, so I mean streamlined in the sense of when you put forward the initiative, you've made sure prior, you've done all of the due diligence and testing, you know it's going to be an effective thing, you've done all the work you can to make sure it's just going to work, rather than doing a scattershot approach of a bunch of different initiatives, seeing which one kicks off the road, <coughs> and then supporting that one, which in the end wastes some money in other places. So I just mean working smarter, not just working harder. So I absolutely believe that the only way to fix this is to become an independent student union again. Um, as I said before, not 20 years ago, we occupied a registry building over fee increases, over stuff like staff cuts and service cuts, and we won. We fought a huge battle. We occupied a, a university building for an entire week and we won. We beat the university. That was only because OUSA and its students were independent, a strong union, and were supporting one another. So, the only way we can do that is to become independent again. Um, that way we have the money year in, year out. We are not beholden to the university and their whims and demands. Uh, that is, in my opinion, the only way we can do that. I think that it's important to note that um, it's about evidence, it's about basing things in reality, and it's about being means tested. So we can come up with initiatives, as Kerry was saying, as a lean organisation, as all you were saying, as an organisation that can rapidly product and rapidly change, we can come up with solutions to these problems that we can prove work or don't work, and then we can approach the university or 
just to like um, grow that within ourselves. So it's important to look at the actual state of the way that things are, which means we need to gather more evidence and make informed decisions as opposed to try and make decisions about a situation that we might not know everything about. I think being funded by the university doesn't make us below the university, so we have equal voice. That's why we sit on the university committee and we represent the student body. So I think the way I would promote or stand up for the student is to talk to the university more and like get more transparency from them and work together with them. Um, uh, yeah, I think that there needs to be um, some testing that needs to be done to see what works and what doesn't in terms of becoming independent from the university. Um, but, yeah. Right, we've got time for a couple more questions. Um, if the vote to implement CCTV cameras, the six CCTV cameras um, into the university, uh, into North Dunedin, sorry, by the university, was solely down to your vote, would you vote to approve it? Would you vote to oppose it? Uh, yeah, one word answer, yes or no. I would approve it. And for CCTV. For safety, yeah. Uh, I would vote to reject a surveillance state that is uh, infringing upon our privacy and our personal lives. Okay, uh, no, I would not vote for it. <laughs> yes, with caveats. No, until there's more transparency. Yes, but with exceptions. No. Uh, this year there are multiple tickets running for the executive. Are you worried, or should we be worried, about the potential for clicks forming on the executive next year? Sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, so, I mean, you're not on a ticket, but um, but are you worried that with so many tickets running for it, running for the executive this year, so we've got the Be Bold ticket, we've got the International Socialists, um, we've got Unity, are you worried that this is going to lead to the formation of cliques or just like tight little units that don't interact with each other on the executive next year? No, I don't think. I'm not worried. I don't think so at all. I think when I think of the word click, you might disagree. I think of kind of a group of people that are kind of similar in work and packs. Our, personally, I'm kind of you know, biased, obviously, <laughs> but our unity is completely diverse. The people that I have never had talked to before, 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 talked to before coming into this ticket, so I don't think we at all would become a click. Other tickets as well, I don't think so either. Sorry, I can't hear your question. You said there are people on your ticket that you've never talked to before. How are you yeah. united with them? No, that comes off really bad. Um, I hadn't met before coming into this, and then when you meet, you try to figure out if you get along with these people, and then you become united. That's how you meet, that's how you become friends and talk to people, isn't it? For example, I haven't met you before. I might, we might get along after this, have a talk, become friends, we unite on different opinion. Pardon? No, it's not about getting along, but it's about being united on the idea of representing the student body the best way possible. Did I answer the question for you? I, I'm going to add to the question as well. And so if you're on a ticket, can you say whether or not you think your ticket will work collaboratively and cooperatively with other tickets, and how you'd achieve this as well? So talk about whether you think tickets have the potential to collapse and how your ticket would work with other tickets. I don't think hmm, our ticket has the ability to collapse. Yeah. And the second one of your question is, I think we're all quite diverse, independent people. With different, we all have different perspectives. And I think if we were put into a different ticket with other people or become an exec with other people that unfortunately didn't get elected, I think we'll get along just fine. We're all adults. Can do it. <laughs> yeah, this isn't high school. Um, <laughs> this is the clicks are ridiculous. You're here to do a job. You're here to represent your students. And if you're gonna have, act like that, then just don't be on the exec. 
Yeah, I mean, if you if you want to make sure that you don't have factions, then just vote for Unity and get a ten man ticket who know they can work together, right? Like that solves the problem immediately. Yeah, it's a big faction all working together, which is slightly better. No, but it, we, in seriousness, we've actually sat down and we've talked about this quite a lot. Because it's true, when you're running with 10 people, the likelihood of everyone getting in is not going to be that high. So what happens if we're working with people who currently we're working against? Well, the truth is, the unity ticket in that case dissolves. We sit down, we talk with them, we get to know them in the exact same way that three or four... Let me continue, and I'll come back to you. In the same way that we, we talked to each other three or four months ago when we first all met, and we've been working for like six hours a day, seven hours a day sometime to get to know each other, work on policies, work on how we can function together. Why form a ticket in the first place? Because through forming a ticket, I've got more knowledge about OUSA than I would have done on my own. We're stronger as a team. We're stronger when we're united. That's how that works. That's why everyone wants to run on a ticket. We can do more things. We can advocate for more things. We can test each other's point of view. We can have some really in-depth debates that I wouldn't get if I was isolated in a bubble on my own. So I think forming a ticket can be a strength. You've just got to be careful and you've got to do it well. I'd like to say that the Liverpool political engagement this year has been incredible. It's been amazing to see such an impressive turnout today and for the rest of the debates and the level, number of people in total who are signing up to, you know, uh, uh, run for an election. So I think running as a ticket is a good idea. I think that at the end of the day we are all still students at the same university with the same goals, dreams and aspirations. So regardless of our personal beliefs, our political beliefs, whatever, I think that on a t as a uh, executive, we will all be working together regardless. <laughs> as Kyrgios said, we have talked about this as a ticket, as unity. Um, one of the first um, concerns that I raised actually was, was this, you know, if, we, if, if some of us get in and some of us don't, how's it, how's it going to work? Because I was um, invited into this ticket, I wasn't um, involved from the formation, so it was one of the, one of the things I wanted to know. And. Um, and yeah, so basically it was um, explained to me that we're running as a ticket, but as soon as whoever gets elected, gets elected, that concept um, dissolves. Unity ceases to be. It's, it's a temporary structure that we're using in order to educate each other and to come up with ideas. I've learned so much more about OUSA through watching all these people learn about their individual roles, about um, them coming up with ideas, about bouncing concepts off each other, and yeah, um, like like was stated, we are we're adults. This isn't high school, um, so it's about working with the people that get elected and recognizing that they get elected as representatives in a democracy, and you have to respect that. So I just want to clarify: any shared goals that Unity have that you're running an election for, do they also dissolve with the ticket, or do they carry on just as individuals? Definitely. Um, so in our individual capacities, we will, of course, like. Because through this we've been able to come up with our policies, we've been able to come up with our initiatives, we've been able to um, you know, generate plans that are multi-officer oriented, like as recreation I've got a lot of ideas for working with colleges, for working with welfare, for working with a variety of the other officers and we've already discussed those in depth um, in terms of just the role, not ourselves necessarily as individuals. Um, so whoever gets elected for colleges next year, I know that I'm going to want to work closely with them. You know, Whoever gets elected for welfare, I know how and why I would want to work closely with them. Um, yeah. I also, I only knew one person in my ticket and I, when I met with everyone, I got to know everyone and then we, I got to work with them and that's what I, what's gonna happen next year also. And we can respect each other's opinion despite if we click or not, I don't, I don't know what click exactly means. And so I respect students' choice, that students can choose the best person <coughs> for this role, for each role. So whoever gets in, I will work best with them. Um, yeah, I don't think that um, click necessarily form we would do get in the because, yeah, unity is, we are unity up until the day of the voting, and so which whoever gets elected will get elected. But the um, values and the ideals that we've, um, talked about and we've um, embraced, I think they will carry over in the idea of in being an open executive where you're open to different ideas and you're different to open opinions and um, no, I feel, I feel that once you get to talk with each of your exec members and you get to know them, I don't think that any clicks should form because, well, yeah.
You're, you're all individual people. We are, yeah. Okay, so we've got time for two really quick questions. So I've got Greg and then Monik, and then we'll do closing statements. Cool. So my name's Quinn Jenkins. I'm the current education officer. I'm also running for administrative vice president. Um, also a member of the unity ticket. So um, full disclosure there. Also, this question to my personal capacity and not my USA's capacity. Now, um, I'm interested to know from everyone, I guess, the bread and butter of what you want to do. I'd like one, a quick snapshot of one policy or one initiative that you intend to do that's tangible next year. We've heard a lot of general ideas, we've heard a lot of general stances, but what is one thing that you want to be remembered for achieving or one thing you think is really important to achieve? Um, I think that as campaigns officer, I feel that there should be a serious change regarding the amount of glass that we've seen on uh, streets around Dunedin. I think it is a legitimate issue, the fact that you have to walk down Castle Street and be worried about whether or not you're stepping glass, whether or not Umi has to be wary that she'll um, get glass in her tyres. I think it's a genuine issue. And me personally, I will make active steps in talking to the proctor and talking to um, students around those er student areas about how we can instill change about that and how we can go about um, cleaning up the streets and making them a lot more safe. So I really want to make this university a place where international students can feel connected to, and now this, this, I do this through creating support group and peer support system, much like career support, and I think I will do this. Um, I really want to create more alcohol alternative events on campus, um, sober morning raves, Blow yoga, carbonites. I've run those events this year and they've all been wildly fantastic with packed out venues. There's a genuine desire for an alternative cultural direction on campus and we just need to make that accessible and facilitate further engagement throughout the population in a way that doesn't put alcohol on the pedestal. I want to see OUSA support more student-led direct action. In the past couple of weeks we have seen the students organising rallies against the staff cuts, we have seen uh, the PE school organising their own rally against the decimation of their degrees and the reduction of the value of their degrees. We have also seen students against sexual, sexual violence uh, being extremely brave releasing statements about what's going on with them and their uh, situation. And where has OUSA been for all of these things? Where has our president been? He has not been at any of these. He has not released any statements regarding them at all. He has been deaf and silent and so has OUSA. What I want to see is an OUSA that actively supports its students and actively looks out for them. Uh, so I've worked on a couple of things this year as president of the Postgrad Society. I've um, started a campaign towards yeah, getting awareness about student flooding violence issues and stopping that. It's currently on hiatus because I don't want to advertise too much and break any ethics rules here, but after the voting closes, we can get back to that. Next year though, specifically, as an executive member, I want to help ensure that we've got a transparent, open, accountable executive. That means I want to make sure that the information gets out to students from the source as fast as possible so people know immediately what's going on from the voice of the executive. I'm pushing for that hard. Unfortunately, the people around me agree with doing something like that. As a postgraduate officer, I want to be able to make sure that we've got the most comprehensive welfare survey we've ever seen so that we have some genuine facts and we can go back year after year, time and time again, and see what's going on with mental health for postgraduates. Is it improving? What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? How can we make a genuine difference? Um, mine, of course, will be pushing mental health extensively over the course of next year. It's an issue that's been ignored too long and it needs to definitely be brought forward. As colleges officer, I will be pushing that there is extensive RA training, the support needed. Um, people love the kid and cuddle time, so more of that. Woo! and just a recognition that they know they can go and get help and there is someone to talk to. I'll keep it short and snappy. Um, excuse my shivering, I'm really cold. Um, it's simple, increase mental health awareness in colleges and increase kind of life skill seminars and things like that in colleges as well. Um, I as an international officer would like to um, have, provide the best uh, support and services for the international students and also um, the information systems for those first years who are wanting to get into special programs and having those information evenings, having the students, international students who are already into those courses where first years can get the knowledge from them, how they went through that. And also for students who want to get into through graduate entry into special courses, also having information evenings for them. And also I'd like to say I'm not running for equality, but I'm running for equity 
and for those groups that feel like they have been deprived but they're not being able to go out there having events um, where they all can um, socialize and mix in um, yeah and I'd like to say again I'm not running for equality but equity thanks Hi, my name is Monique. Um, I'm running for president the next year and I'm part of the Justice Through Solidarity ticket. Um, my question is almost a yes or no, but um, I noticed on the Unity ticket you guys have five members sitting up there right now and you've said that you would like to establish a wellness centre. Um, like, why and why not just put that support into the student support centre, into resources that we already have instead of making new ones? And then to everyone who is not on the unity ticket, say you get onto the executive and you are part of them, would you support the wellness centre or would you like to see it directed more towards other things? Directed towards other things and welfare? Um, I, get your, I get your point of view. We personally just thought a wellness centre would be, or I personally think a wellness centre would be better, but if you want a longer response, I'll give you a paragraph on it on our Facebook page later or something. Um, I definitely do think it should be invested into student support. That is a really important factor of the university. I think we're going to build on what student support already does and bring them into the fold. It's not about doubling up. That would be pointless. It's about creating a place for welfare to be dealt with at a preventative level, in the early stages of any mental health issues you get, right? So instead of just going straight to student help because you've been waiting for six months and now you're in a really dire spot, it's about having a place that feels accessible and open to come along to talk with peer mediators, potentially, to talk with people from student support, to talk with people that OUSA can provide to help you get through that rough patch before it becomes a serious problem. I've got two follow-up questions to that. So is the wellness interview room right? <laughs> it's, it's two with a specific. It's two with that specific response. So I'll, I'll go back to that. So, so is OUSA going to be running the wellness centre? And do you not think it's the university's uh, responsibility to provide preventative care? Okay. So I need to say first of all and I don't want this to sound like a cop-out answer at all. I, as a person who is not currently a member of OUSA, not, sorry, not currently an executive member of OUSA, I have an asymmetry of knowledge here. So, if I'm elected, when I'm elected, then I'll be able to sit down and make a better and more informed decision about precisely what OUSA should be doing in this case. I think, yeah, so it's, it's very difficult for me to answer. As for whether or not this should be the university's issue, I think I'll refer to what I said earlier, that it's not just the burden of the university, it's the burden on everybody, to look out for everybody, to look after the people next to you. That means it's only USA's job, it's your job in the personal capacity, it's the university's job. We're supposed to have each other's backs here, and not just say, oh, well that's the university's job, never mind us. I believe it's the university's role to look after our mental health and well-being to a certain level. Um, I do, I honestly believe... <coughs> that if we were to build a welfare centre, we would be wasting valuable time and resources trying to get something off the ground when we have something ready to go already. We just need to put more funding, more resources, and more staff and support into it. Again, I think it's important to recognise that wellness and welfare is a holistic thing. Um, so student support provides many crucial services, but there are ways we can build upon that in, um, a, non, um, in, a, in a way that um, facilitates an additional level of support. So whether that's through peer-to-peer um, -peer counseling, which is a mission that's already been put through, or through providing like more yoga and mindfulness classes, like there are many um, independent um, campaigns going on in the mental health area and being able to bring those all into one easily accessible um, kind of concept would be uh, beneficial to all of them, you know, to, to combine all of those initiatives in order to provide a uh, holistic level school. I think it is important to have wellness center because the way I understand the wellness center is a place where you can go and feel comfortable and safe. And in up the campus, we don't have this space yet. So I think, yeah, this is in, like this is some new concept which is not the same as student support, which is needed. Yeah. Um, I'll have to agree with Umi on that one. I do feel like there isn't currently a spot where I can just go there and just relax and just feel, you know, catered to. And I feel like a wellness centre is definitely the way to go about doing this. All right, fantastic. So that's the last question. So we're just going to round up now with each candidate speaking for 30 seconds about why we should vote for them and why they're the best candidate for their role. 
Okay. Will, sorry, and I will cut you short if you go over 30 seconds, so you know, it's nice and quick. Hey guys, again, I'm Roger Yan, and I'll be your campaign's manager, officer, sorry, for 2018. Um, I've had a myriad of experience so far. I have been um, a founding member of Pulsar. I've had several connections with the DCC. I've built a, an incredible um, network of influence, and I think that personally what I will do as campaign's officer is I will actively work to make Dunedin streets safer and cleaner. I'm Umi. I'm running to be an international officer in 2018, and I love just being international. Like I love surrounded by international environment. I've been to 15 other countries, and I've lived with people from 30 different countries for four months. And I've organized lots of events, and I, I also joined the International Food Festival with Syrian people this year. And I just have lots of like ideas how I can support international students, and I have extensive amount of experience for counseling. So I'm like really into supporting people and creating lots of events that where people can feel welcome and connected. So you should vote for me. Hi, I'm Josh, and I'm really passionate about recreation at USA. Um, in addition to the awesome education I've gotten through university, the recreational activities on this campus have changed my life. They've facilitated heaps of growth for me, they've connected me with amazing communities and important knowledge that has changed my life and I want to be able to provide that for other people, I want to be able to open that up and I want to be able to contribute more to the culture that has defined me as a person. You should vote for me, Angus Wilson, for your campaign's officer for 2018 because I have a wealth of knowledge working with community and staff groups to fight for the rights of people and workers everywhere. I have organized, helped organise strikes for KFC workers where we, all, where we won better working conditions and wages for them. Um, I have worked with uh, students against sexual violence, trying to get their message across. I have been working with the PE school and their demonstrations. And I've been working with uh, staff and students to fight, for, uh, to fight against the job cuts at the university. This, all this experience and my many years of working with the unions and that sort of stuff uh, is the experience and the expertise that I bring with myself to this OUSA campaign. Hi, I'm Terry. I'm running for the postgraduate officer position in 2018. I'm a master. I'm studying towards a master of health sciences currently. I'm an ethics tutor. I'm also the president of the postgraduate society. These things mean that I've worked on the graduate research student liaison committee. I've worked with my own small executive. I've got some knowledge of how to work with OUSA, and I've been learning a lot about that with the unity ticket right now. And I'm about student. I'm about student welfare, especially postgraduate welfare and mental health welfare, and about postgraduate representation. I've got the skills, the passion, and the ideas to make a genuine, lasting success out of my position. I want to make sure that there's meaningful and pragmatic initiatives that are brought forward, and I'm going to work really hard in your interest to represent your interests and represent your needs. Okay, so um, I'm Chawan and I think you should vote for me for colleges because colleges are constantly evolving every single year and I'm about to walk out of my college being there for the second year now. Um, if you want someone relevant, reliable and really ready to go, you should vote for me. Hi, I'm Nohan. Um, I'm running for colleges as well. I kind of felt to get involved in quite a bit. I am President of Red Cross, Secretary of Road Direct, I get involved with the Syrian refugees, but put all that aside, first year was my most favourite year of all my university years, and I just want to make all first years have as good of a year as I did, so I'm passionate about it, and I want to get going as well. Hi everyone, my name is Siobhan Kanea, and I'm running for the International Officer for 2018. Um, if you choose me to become your International Officer for next year, I would like to um, as I said, improve the communication systems and also get a more inclusive international committee and also coincide with other committees and working with them. Um, and also, like to say again, I'm running for not only for equality but equity. Thanks. All right, fantastic. That wraps up the, the candidates' forum today. Can we get one big round of applause for all the candidates? And just a reminder that our next candidates forum is at three o'clock tomorrow, same place. So see hopefully see somebody there. Woo! Yeah, Rob.